the long crown and diamond or the extended crown and diamond knot. And so what we're going to do, oh no, stop being rude Johnny, hello everybody, welcome back. And today's little exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to tie this rather lovely um, two strand stopper knot. So if you have a lanyard, it would look good in the end of your lanyard, looks a little bit like a Turk's head. In a previous video, I did the crown and diamond knot, which is a little bit shorter than this one. But in this one, we're going to do the extended crown and diamond knot. And this works beautifully with paracord because as you tighten up, the paracord flattens out a little bit and you end up with this lovely, almost like Turk's head pattern on the end of your two strand lanyard here. But as you can see, I've done it in ch chunkier rope here. And in today's little exercise, I'm gonna do it in the chunky rope just to make it a little bit easier for you to follow and watch. So anyway, without further ado, let's get knotting. So as you can see here, I have got my length of cord. And the first thing that I'm gonna do with my cord is center it so that we have two equal lengths so there's, the, there's my end there, and if I keep feeding it through, you can see it's been centered at that point there. So the next thing I'm going to do is just lay it out on the table like so. So there is my centered point, and I'm just gonna take it back a little bit like so, so that I can actually show you the knot that we're going to tie in this. Right, so the first thing that we need to do in tying this knot is at the top end here, so let me just sort this out into the two separate sides. There we go. So my two leads are running off there at that point. So that's going to be the top point there. And the first thing that I do is I pass the left hand over the right hand, like so. So pass the left hand. So see here, the left hand is going over the right hand one night. Like so bring it underneath. So we're just basically tying a knot at the top here and then pull that up tight until we get to this point here. So if I just lay that out now, so there we go. Just bring it up a little bit more there. So as you can see here now, what's happened is, is I have gone round underneath that one there, the left hand one, and back out over again. And all it is, is just a simple overhand knot, like so. Right, so now that I've done that, the next thing that I want to do is, I'm gonna take my left hand side and form a loop, like so, over the top of our work. I'm then gonna do exactly the same for the right hand side, instead of going over the top, I'm going to form the loop underneath. So if I just take it like so, and then just fold it under there, and you can now see that in a sense, we've got, let's see, bring that up a little bit closer. We've now got sort of a butterfly effect here. So in other words, that right hand one is going round underneath everything, and the left hand one is going round and over the top of everything. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take the working end on my left side here and I'm going to pass it over everything and take it down through that loop, the right hand wing of the butterfly. So take it all through and you can see here, as I get to this point here, it is now pulled up at that point there. But it's going round, over everything and then finally going underneath the butterfly wing itself there. I now take the right hand working end, this one here that hasn't been used so far. So not this one that's going up through here, but this one that's just coming out underneath. And I take it underneath all of my work. So I take it underneath everything and pass it up through this wing here. So bring it up through that wing and then pull it up. And I can pull it up a little bit and you can see here now, it's crossed over at the bottom here. This one's coming up through the wing. This one's going down through the wing. Right, so that's the next bit. Now we repeat the first procedure again. So if I now take my left hand lead and all I'm gonna do is just pass it over 
to the right like so. I'm then going to take the left hand one, this one here, and take it round, pass it underneath everything like so. Just move it out the way so that you can get underneath everything. And there we go. It's now looks like that. So we've passed it just round underneath and coming out that side. So that's one working end. That's the other working end. The next thing I do now is I take my left hand working end here now and I pass it over everything and I go down through the right hand wing of my butterfly. It's looking less like a butterfly the more that we do this. And then just pull it up through like so and then just bring it through. That's it. And now that I've done that, I take my right hand working end and I pass it underneath everything and I bring it up through that left hand wing there. So bring it underneath everything and then through the left hand wing and just pull it up a little bit. That's it, don't need to pull it too tight. And so now we've got that. So there, let's see, that's one working end. That's the other working end there. And now I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit into view so we can see the top bit here. And now the next thing I want to do is our original overhand knot that we did here, that one there, just form a little loop in there. And what I'm going to do is take the right hand working end, bring it round and up through that gap. And then with the left hand working end, there's my little left hand working end, I'm just gonna bring it up over everything and through that hole that we've created there. So that then those two, the two working ends are now running parallel out of the loop like so. And we've basically, there you go, we've tied it. Well, not really, because all we've got to do now is if I've turned it round here now, if I just gently pull on both ends here, you'll gradually see that as I pull on it, we will all of a sudden, we will get that diamond effect appearing. Now the thing with this is you have to be gentle with it don't over tighten it to start with, just gently tease up on it and pull up and then gradually as we tease up, and you can see here now, it's starting to look more like a diamond shape. And as I say, with paracord, especially with paracord, this works a lot better because the paracord here is fairly flexible. The outer casing will close down onto the actual knot itself and like filling the gap as such. And we end up with a nice Turk's head looking pattern there. But if I keep tightening up on this one here, so just gently go around, don't over tighten, just gently pull all the cordage through and then eventually you will end up with your diamond knot in there. And yes, on bigger ropes, it does look a bit gappy as they say, but you can see here now that that is now turning into a nice looking symmetrical knot there. And so that's basically it, the extended or the long crown and diamond knot. So you know, and there it is in the red, and of course, best of all, it is in the paracord, and that would look good on the end of any lanyard. This one still needs tightening up a little bit, so just gently go round, but don't over tighten, as I said, gently go round, pull it through, and eventually, it will fold in on itself and then you end up with that nice extended pattern on your paracord. So anyway, once again, thank you very much for watching and if you enjoyed it and if you hated it, but please, hey, leave me a comment and I do answer all comments even if they're rude. I might be Saki back, but yeah, send me a comment and anyway, I'll see you again next time. So let's get knotting. Bye-bye.